this one's for the culture. Me and wifey in the room thinking of a master plan Thinking how we can influence the culture from where we stand Knowing that our steps are ordered by the master's hand Still ten toes down, we ain't switching up the stance The mission of this music ain't just to make them dance Trying to tell them about the rock cause they build- And welcome, welcome, welcome to the latest episode of The Bond Chronicles We are excited to be here for episode 64 uh, A lot going on in the world The uh, Finals is tied up. People are breaking up. There are rallies being happening around the country this past weekend. Uh, Something in the Water is coming up this week. Uh, So definitely stay tuned for that. Just a lot, a lot of stuff that we have going on in our world and in our lives. And thank you so much for taking some time out to share with us in this moment. Um, So before we get started, I do want to let you guys know, please like, share, and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, We are on pretty much every main podcast platform, Apple Music, Google, Spotify. So go ahead and make sure that you are running those numbers up. YouTube continues to grow as well. And make sure that you are telling your friends about it if you are entertained. With that being said, I am blessed to be here with my host. This is Bond Chronicles. And we are the Bond Chronicles. So we are obviously in a relationship and we we've are. been in one for some time. Three years. Three years. Yes, it has a lovely, exciting, uh, invigorating three years. Mm-hmm. And in those times, there are good times and there are not so good times. <laughs> and if you're like us and you got a bunch of kids, you are incentivized to work through it, not break up. However, if you're young, without children, uh, attractive, and used to date a toxic person, you may not be inclined to fight for it. And so in recent days, weeks, we've learned Lori Harvey and Michael B. Jordan, everyone's relationship goals has died. Everyone's relationship goals. Yeah, I mean, that felt like that was a thing. I said it before. I will say it again. I have never been the biggest Lori Harvey fan. I don't quite get all the hype personally. I don't know that there is a ton of talent there for me and my experience with seeing her. But she is a free agent. And I am sure her DMs have been flooded And you are in competition with a goat because the goat was getting lots of action with Lori at a recent photo shoot. But my question for you, what? You. (laughs) The the, the goat was. Goat was having a blast. Um, Is what? What does this mean for them? For individually? Uh, Do you think this helps them individually? Hurts them individually? Do you think they'll get back together? Like, is this all publicity? Like, what? It's summertime. (laughs) You know how people get when the right, summer's coming? Summer. Yeah, except all the hot girl summers are actually like dating people. What hot girl summer single? We just saw Carisha, please. She's clearly Carisha. in a relationship. Carisha, what did I say? Carisha. I didn't say that. I said Carisha. Well, either way, it's, it's Carisha. Oh, uh, Carisha. Young Miami uh, started her <laughs> new podcast. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit. She's in a relationship. Uh, or is she? I don't know. She doesn't want to be married, but I think she said they go together. I think that was. Yeah, she said they go together. And he, he said he was single. Yeah, and then, like, he wasn't. It's just weird. I, don't, I didn't quite get an understanding. But my point is, I don't think she is going to be hot girl summary unless she's getting paid to do so on the stage of performing. But we'll see her with Jack Harlow this fall. Um, Meg has been super quiet, as she should be, but she, I believe, is still in a. Is she still with Cardi? Um, Cardi, been married, chilling. Nikki, married, chilling. Beyonce, married, chilling. Like, what hot girls are there? Um, Doja. I'm pretty sure she's in a relationship. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> um, Kim. Oh, no, Kim is in a relationship. She's Kim still is with definitely Pete. in a relationship. Um, Shoot. Courtney got married. Bia? Bia? Bia, she's not on that level. We're not doing that. Oh. 
I mean, well, you said who's single and out there that, like, ready to mingle. Cool and relevant and being. Ari like, Lennox just broke up with her boo after like a week. Yeah, it was really fast. I don't put her on that level, but and she's not a hot girl, is she? I mean, everybody claims hot girl ishness. Her doesn't. No, she does not. I don't think that's her wave though. Um, Summer is in a relationship. Summer well. is SZA. She's single and released a new album that I haven't listened to. It's a repackage of old music. So shout out to TDE for getting that off. Um, I don't know, but it's definitely still hot girl summer for people. I'm having um, like I'm, Tiffany had to say she wants to settle down, so she's just not trying to be outside. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm I'm gonna have a lukewarm summer, you know. I've got some, some plans, some mm -hmm. things going on. That's in the private eye. Follow her around. Okay. Because it's like that. Yeah. But now like the Lori Harvey, Michael B. Jordan breakup thing, like I don't think I necessarily have them as couple goals, relationship goals, whatever. I How just not so. Yeah. Um, because one, they weren't married and they hadn't been together long enough to be relationship goals. Okay. I think the label of relationship goals gets thrown around too casually. Um, you know, they, it's not put on, it's not given to couples' relationships that have lasted, uh, you know, amount of time where it's just like, dang, like they've been through some stuff. They've got a lot of stuff going on, but they still seemingly love each other in the public eye. So um, I never labeled them as relationship goals. I always just thought they were really cute. Um, and it, it's, it's like a double-edged sword for me, kind of, because like I can understand her reasoning as to why she wasn't ready to settle down. Kevin Sanders is rolling over in his grave. Don't nobody care. Um... <laughs> But at the same time, I feel like, and then obviously this is all from the outside looking in, the things that he said he was ready for, he's like, the blog sphere said that he is ready to settle down, have kids, blah, 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 blah. He is 10 years older than her. So, like, you understand that. Um, I feel that there's some wiggle room in all of that, though. Like, if she's not ready to get married, that's one conversation. Like, okay, we're not on the same page. Not ready to have kids, we're still not on the same page. But do we want to continue this relationship? I think if they maybe had a different conversation about overall what they wanted from each other, maybe they could have come to some kind of, you know, understanding. Um, I'm sure it's not as cut and dry as what we've read. Um, Men are not together. I mean, no, I know they're not together, but what I'm saying, I'm sure there's a, there was a lot more com um, conversation behind those doors between the two of them. You um, want something I don't want, I'm done. Seems simple. You got it, bro. Do you I don't know, am, I, am I gonna finish my opinion? You said there's not more to it. I don't understand what else. I said there could be a lot more to it. Like you think someone cheated? No. What I'm saying is, like, given the reasons that, you know, um, <clears throat> is it the reasons why they broke up? I would say that's never an easy decision to just make all willy nilly. She seems to be really comfortable. Well, I guess why. I... So you don't think she was like really in love with him? No. And so that's why she's out here working. Yes. Why would she not work? And I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what you're saying since you're not Everything, letting me finish. I, I have let you finish. I'll let you go on and on. On and on. We've only been on here for eight minutes and, and I've spoken for like two. The last two to three. I thought you just, you know. Nah, bro, you got it. Go on ahead. Go on ahead. I just jump in there. I don't understand your perspective. Like I view, I view it very simply, and you're seeming to think that it's more complex. It seems like he wanted to move forward with her. She did not, and she would rather, as it got warmer, be outside. That to me seems simple. His, from what I've seen of her since then, I haven't seen any, and I don't follow her, but I haven't. I don't understand. What have you seen? I just went to her social media the other day and saw the goat chewing one. Yeah. 
Like she seems fine versus the one time we seen him out, he looked miserable. Right. So the GOAT thing, the magazine that she took those pictures for yeah. is already on stands. So it's, it's already available. Oh, okay. So she probably took those pictures months ago. Okay. And then she just posted when the magazine released. Okay. Um so you think she's broken up about it? I don't think that you end or what they were together for what two years? Like a year. It was more than a year. I read something that said it was a year, but okay, say it's two, two years. I mean, I, mean, I, don't I don't think you should end a relationship where, you know, know you guys were doing interviews talking about how deeply connected and how you're best friends and you love each other and all this is that and third, you just end a relationship and next week you're just fine. But if she is, then, you know, she is. Yeah, after over one year, so somewhere between a year and two years. But given how her dad has come out and joked about it, how her mom has responded, they also don't seem super broken up or sad. They're like making jokes about it. Like, like it's just, the, that side of the equation, the lore side, seems like, like this is all a joke. It was fun and games. Like, uh, it's, it's over. over. I'm, I'm over. over. Too bad. Let's, Let's make jokes. jokes. And I just, I just don't, don't see that. that side. But, but I, I don't see him as that kind of person. And personally, I think she's going to regret this. I think the way she's handled it, she's going to regret it. And I think she will end up regretting this decision because I don't. I don't. I think there's a lot more futures in the world than there are Michael B. Jordans. And as she gets older, I think she's going to lean more into the, the futurist bag. And there's going to come a time, I believe, and young man said she doesn't want to get married in her thing. I just think there comes a time when a woman wants to, like, chill out. Um, you started a new show, and I didn't watch it um, because the finals were on. But from the recap and from other stuff I've heard, it seems like women, once they hit the 30-plus threshold, their, their goals are different. The idea of raising a family is a lot more valuable. Um, the idea of being with one person is a lot more valuable. Uh, building something that will last for the rest of your life seems more valuable. And I think people underestimate the difficulty in finding someone you can spend the rest of your life with. Mm -hmm. I and do I, agree with that. And I think from what it seemed, and I could be wrong, they seemed to vibe well. Now, could she have been playing them all along? Because I saw the Valentine's Day stuff they did. Could it have all been for show? Maybe. But I don't think you just find chemistry walking down the street. And I hope for him, because he is older, um, that he can find someone and not get trapped in the industry. Well, I don't think there's any shortage of women ready to help him heal his broken heart. But that's my, that is exactly what I'm saying. You don't want to find a lot of those women because those women are not in it for the right reason. And he seems grounded and such. He doesn't want that. So will he go through a phase? Sure. He might pop up with a couple of people here and there. But I hope he doesn't get stuck with someone because of a moment. Because he seems like a good guy. Not the biggest fan of his movies, but seems like a good dude. And I hope he works out. And seeing he was at the game with Corday, who I think is a solid grounded individual. For sure. With a solid grounded woman by all accounts, I think that speaks positively. When Ye broke up with his situation, he was with Future. And we've seen him kind of run through a couple of different people in hindsight. And now he had to chill out because I think he was not being himself to a certain extent. So. I don't think Lori is necessarily going to regret it. Especially if they don't get back together, you know, patch things up. I don't think she'll necessarily regret it, regret it, but I do think this will be like a what if kind of moment. And I don't think what ifs are, are always regrets, but you do contemplate if you had made a different decision, you know, how things would have turned out. Um, like I said, I, I don't think Michael is going to, he's not going to have an issue finding another woman. It'll just be a, obviously the difficulty of finding someone 
who he cares about as much as he cared about Lori, seemingly. Um, and then it depends, like, how invested he was. But I, I can speak as someone who loved hard at one point, and when it didn't work, and I think there's a lot of other men I talk to, it can change it. So, unfortunately, the next woman may get a different Michael. Um, and I hope that doesn't happen, but I could see, you know, next time he's went all out, it didn't work. So how were you different from the first time you got married between when we got married? Completely different. Like my ideals, my mindset, my vision of what marriage is supposed to look like, my role uh -huh. in marriage, uh, what I'm willing to tolerate and deal with, the way in which I communicate. Like, it's totally different. Hmm. Obviously, I don't know what you were like married before. It's not what you're like married. In some, in some ways, better. Um, communication, I would say, I'm definitely a lot better. But as far as how I feel, my outlook on the world, in combination with my first marriage and life happening, now I'm a completely different person than I was five years ago. I mean, I do think you're very pessimistic. Yes. Um... Like, I enjoy love and what it's supposed to be. The reality of that, I think, is far Very less different. glamorous. But I don't, and again, I think that's a lot of things people don't, who've never been in long-term committed relationships. I think that's something that, that gets missed. Like, we look again, you look at relationship goals and couple goals and all this, and it's like, it's because those are the beautiful Snapchat Instagrammable moments that are cute and fuzzy and lovey-dovey. It's not 3 a.m. when your kids are crying and one person's got to go to work and the other person is like sick because germs from the kids and everybody's miserable. Like those are not the moments that are always broadly, you know, put on display. But those are, you have more moments like that than you do the Instagram moments. So I don't know. I'd like to think that they're just going to get back together. Um, you know, and yeah, the reports are true, though. Fairy tale. That you proposed that you turned them down. How do you come back to Oh, no, you don't. I, it's difficult, too, because if he proposed and if she said no, and they broke up, it's one thing to propose and say, no, I'm not ready for this right now. Give me XX amount of time. It's another thing to say, no, I'm not ready for this right now, and now I don't want to be with you at all because you're way more invested than I am. There's, I don't think there's a way that you can explain to someone why you're not invested enough to even stay in the relationship after you know turning down a proposal. So That's interesting. Yeah, that's dead. Um, and again, these are all blogs. I haven't seen the pictures or videos of the no. Uh, hopefully that doesn't exist for my boy. For sure. Um, but that kind of goes to the point we had in the podcast a while ago about what happens when you do the proposal the way the woman says she wants it done, and she says no. So you got all the friends, you got all the family, you got the nice romantic restaurant, you got the pedals and all that. The pedals. You bought the ring, and then she's like, nah. Yeah, that relationship's over that night. And you can probably lose my number outside of if we live together, you got to move out. But that's all bad. Um, so that is the the current update. Uh, we will, I'll be interested to see. I'm not going to start following Lori, but I'm sure I follow her. the next time she pops out with someone, we will know. And same for him. Uh, I think Black Panther's almost done, so maybe he'll pop out a little bit more. But given the media reaction to his last outing, he may want to just hang out for a I mean, his last, he, like, he looked depressed. Right. Like It was Will Smith and the Red Table Talk. <laughs> <laughs> Those aren't the memes you want. Those are not the memes you want. Um, so, yeah, it'll, we'll see what happens. Wishing them both the best, but I do think she made a mistake. Okay. Uh, that's just me. Um... So that speaks, that leads to, and you talk, we talked about the news cycle and how he was perceived in the news. In a reverse of fortunes for women, Lori's being, by all accounts, praised, in, at least from what I'm saying. She's young. She doesn't need a man. You can take your time. You don't have to be forced to need a man. It's okay. Like I've seen a bunch of that. 
fine, live there, stay there. But I also have seen, you know, she was the, they always use Future. I don't like bashing Future on here as much, but he's just somebody that everyone seems to be able to relate to. Having that type of mentality is one thing. For man or woman to be, hey, this is what I want. This is what I'm going to get. Nick Cannon has done it differently, um, where he tells you up front, this is what I want. This is what it's going to be. And he must have, like, the world's greatest firm because he just keeps having kids. And I know there's a bunch of people that have had unprotected sex a lot. He just keeps getting people pregnant. And I don't know what they have, but you should probably talk to them about whatever they're doing because he gets it done <laughs> regularly. But my question is, women have said for the longest time, be honest, be upfront. If all you want to do is sleep with me, tell me. And then I would decide if that's what I want to do. My question is, what sense does that make? Because if I'm a guy and the answer is no, and no means no, then I'm done. So do you want me to waste your time or be honest? But I also have an end goal in mind. And I don't know what Lori's reasoning was for breaking up or getting even getting into the relationship. Maybe there was something there. But I would think they didn't just get to this point where she was like, I don't want a long-term future. I want to chill out. So by all accounts, she wasted his time. Given that that is the case, which one is more ideal? Is it, I'm not really into this, but I don't want to be honest. I don't want to hurt your feelings. Let's see what happens, and maybe over time we'll grow together. Or is, should you just be like, hey, this is what I want, this is what I'm here for, and you have to choose what you do with that, which is more ideal for you? Uh, just be honest. Um, especially, oh, I don't know. I would say, depending on where you are in life, if you're actively seeking a partner, husband, wife, whatever, you don't want to waste a bunch of time with a bunch of people who aren't looking for the same thing. Um, and, you know, you can typically figure it out in a few conversations, a few dates. Like, are we vibing? Is this going to go anywhere? How interested the other person is. But when you put your cards on the table, either person, um, I think it lets the other person know, like, okay, um, this is what's going on with them. Do I want to entertain it? If you're a cruddy person, you'll proceed and waste the person's time knowing you have no intention of, you know, meeting the requirements that they have. Um, if you're a good person, I think, and someone tells you this is what I want and you know you're not willing to be, do, or, you know, go through all these things with them, you just say, no, I'm not ready for that. Thanks for dinner and bounce. Like, I don't, I don't think it should be that difficult. Like, the whole what is the phrase? Um, dating with intention. Like that. I think it's a thing because there are so many people out here who either don't know what they want, what they want, or they're like meandering through all these relationships trying to figure out what fits, and that doesn't work for people who know where they are and what they want from not just themselves, but from their life and their partner. Um, the more honest you are with the person that you're talking to, like women have little black books, Rolodexes, whatever you want to call it nowadays, <laughs> you know, a phone full of numbers that, you know, obviously we don't advocate for just sleeping around all willy nilly, but there, you know, back in the day, like I had a few people in my phone that, you know, I could call for that particular purpose. And, you know, that's what it was. I don't think, I think men don't give women, speaking specifically, enough credit for when we say, hey, this is what I'm interested in. If you're not interested in that, let me know and let me decide how. I want to proceed with our communication. What do you mean we don't give you enough credit? Because you automatically assume that if the woman says, well, no, I don't want to just sleep around or, 
if you're honest with just wanting to sleep with someone, they're automatically going to say, no, I don't want to just sleep out around. I want a relationship. Some women are not like that. And I'm learning that even more to an extent than what I realized, because especially women who've been single for a long time and they are very particular about what it is they want. Like in a relationship, sure, like they have a hard stance, but for someone that they, you know, are just entertaining until they find the one, you know. So you, you're saying, and I, you know how we run into this whole problem all the time. <laughs> Would you say more often than not, 51% of the women or more are good with casual sex, no relationship, don't pay for dates, like we just sleep together and it's good. I don't want to put a percentage on it because I don't know, but I do know the women that I know and a lot more of them are okay with a casual sexual relationship with someone than, you know, not. I think that's garbage. And the reason I ask for percentages and I let you, obviously we don't know. <laughs> um, it's because I think if you're a guy and your percentages are one in five, say 20% of women feel that way, that means one in five women I say that to, I would actually get to sleep with. Now, there's a bunch of other factors, like what your car looks like, what your outfit looks like, right, how well, your you breath look smells, like, like all of this, how, your breath, how your breath smells. Um, so I think men naturally have a ton of hoops to jump through just to say hello. Like... We still, I think probably even more so in today's society, people are not taught and shown how to talk to people. Like it's awkward. That initial walk-up line is probably one of the top five most scary things a man will ever do is going up to an attractive woman and trying to start a conversation. Cause it can go a lot of bad ways. Um, it, and, and, and I guess, and that's me looking at life through my perspective. Like, I don't feel like I've ever been a hard person to approach, especially since I used to get approached quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what's the difference? Like, why is it so difficult? So, and I don't know the percentage of women that have the black book that you said. Oh, I mean, most women. Okay. Most women have one. Well, so if most women have that, I think one, they're either content with their roster they already have. Mm -hmm. So you're less likely to add someone to the roster you don't know. Two, the, it's not super common that you're going to find a woman by herself, just out Hanging out today. Yeah. So not only are you trying to, what was it, Hitch, where Will Smith had to go over to the group mm -hmm. of women and meander through that. Um, so there's that part. Uh, there's drinks involved. There's money. Like there's just a ton of other stuff. It's not just like, hey, that attractive woman over there standing over there by herself. I'm not competing with any other guy. There's nothing else. That, the only thing she could say is talk to me. Like this is not realistic. It's hard to hear, especially when you're out. Like I went to get carry out the other day, and it was so loud. I could barely give the order. Oh, uh, the flow moves. Yeah. Yeah, I told you that place be lit. Like the crowd was not super lit, but the band was, and it was just hard to talk. And I've been out in clubs before. I imagine they're still similar. Like if you like, well, apparently people don't dance anymore. They don't. Oh. I didn't see that at any of the concerts we've been to. I really saw, I've seen little to no dancing. And even when I went to the bar, like there was like two people on the front, front, right in front of the stage dancing. And then everybody else was just huddled talking or playing pool or something. Hmm. So in that, like I sat down, um, oh, I didn't sit down. I did, I did sit down. I went to the bar because there was the only place you could order. Yeah. And there was a woman to the left of me. Mm -hmm. I don't know, there was a guy kind of hovering over her, but they didn't talk like the whole time I was there. So I don't know what that what was. What that dynamic was. Like she had a bunch of food in front of her. He didn't eat any. So I don't, I don't know. But I could imagine how difficult it would have been to try and start and have a conversation with that woman in that environment. Like you can barely hear, you gotta lean really close. But that's the point. Stinking COVID. Oh uh, yeah. Right. And I wonder how COVID has affected people hitting on folks in those environments. Because it is- Specifically if people are wearing masks. 
because that would make it even well, no, it's hard to hear as is. Well, because clubs are open now, so nobody's in the club with masks. No, nah, there was people in there with masks. On. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, every time I've gone, they. I mean, it wasn't a lot, but in most, I, I don't want to say that. Um, <laughs> I don't know the demographics of people wearing masks, <laughs> but I don't know. I just feel like it's really difficult hmm. to find someone that's out by themselves, or even if it is a group, like, so if it's a group, what's what's the way? What's the way in if you were giving a guy advice? You're out with you and your three homegirls, y'all are a hot girl summer in there, <laughs> radio, DJs rocking, lights, you got the drinks or the hookah or whatever, I think hookah's got real popular. How does, how does a guy approach you in that scenario? He just comes up to me. Hey, excuse me, can I talk to you? Can I buy you a drink? And, you know, like, I, and that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't think. So you, y'all are all looking this way. He walks up from behind you. He taps me on the shoulder, or like, you know, if there are. I can do a bunch of women that if you tap them on the shoulder, put your hand on their back, they could probably turn around pretty quick. Like, what the heck's going on? And now it's an awkward interaction because the first instance was a hostile act. But see, and, but, and I was having this conversation with some women, you know, a couple weeks ago. We've made it so hard for men to approach us now. Like in the Me Too age or whatever you want to call it, like everybody's hyper aware and super sensitive of their personal space and people entering their personal space and how you approach people. So I do understand for men how that portion of the initial interaction can be very difficult because you are navigating a field mine. Um, my field of mines, I Mind said. Field. Mine field, there we go. Um, but I'm okay with like a tap on the shoulder. So he taps and says what? What is it? What is the line? <sighs> I don't know. This is what men have to go through. Okay, so this is what men have to go through. So as a woman, um, explain to me how easy it is to just have that dope opening line that's just going to hook you. I mean, I don't know. Like, apparently I'm easy and not, like, easy. Mm, okay. <laughs> Great. That's how we got here. shoulder hi beautiful what's your name like because and then i think a lot of it again like women have made it really hard I agree. because you can't say hi queen or what was it the what's the phrase that everybody hates um grand rising and all of that Some stuff people, really say that in people person. Really, oh i don't know if people say that in person but like oh. in text messages and stuff i know people hate that um it's like, just come and be yourself. Like, I'm cool with, like, a hi, beautiful, good evening, what's going on. So you're not you going to address the other people. Or, I mean, you Because can't. now that's rude because y'all was in a conversation and I just came over and talked. I can definitely see a friend say, excuse you're me. right, but no, but that's why you, when you come up, you approach and you, you know, tap the person that you're interested in. And on the shoulder, yeah. I know that your attention is at me, but we're all going to turn. And, you know, you say, good evening, ladies, okay. or, mm -hmm. you know, like, how are you guys doing tonight? You guys look great. I was wondering, attention pointed back at the person that you're interested yeah, yeah, yeah. in, if I could buy you a drink or if I could get to know you a little bit. You know, like, I mean, it's buy you a drink to all start the yeah. topic of conversation. So, with, with Twelve dollars in. Twelve dollars in. So what drink do you buy? What? The guys, I'm gonna buy you a drink. Uh, I mean, do you like, ask her, or should you already have an idea? No, you ask her. So what are you drinking? Yeah, what are you drinking? Can I get you your next round? You yeah. know, like I don't think it's rocket science. There's definitely a very smooth way to do this. I think and I'm going to say that I'm as sure. I'm a woman, I can't necessarily say that it's that smooth. But I do know how I like to be approached. And it doesn't have to be like this super smooth, cool, daddy like, you know, <laughs> thing. It's, I'm a lot more casual. Mm. Other women I do recognize are Especially not. Especially 
and the Lori Harveys and the Carisha. Oh Lee. yeah, and when you so when you're in Instagram. that territory, like there's a whole way that you you mean your presentation has to be. I feel like your presentation has to be good regardless. Like I don't know if you're why you're even out if you don't have one. Why yeah. does that matter? Your presentation. You could be an absolutely ten out of ten as a human being. Well, because your appearance, you get cast away. Why is that? Because we're physical, we're visual people. We what? all are. Everybody, everybody. You can say that you're not, but everybody is to an no, extent. No, I know men are. I feel like most. <laughs> I feel like a lot of women would say, "Yeah, I mean, obviously, I would want." I don't know who the hot guy is, Idris or whoever. This go of Michael would be yeah. successful. We were talking about so. Earlier. I know that's what they say they want, but there's like 20 of those. Mm -hmm. So as a man, if his role is to be a provider, a caregiver, so to speak, or a protector, <coughs> why does his outfit <coughs> even matter? It's not even just about the outfit. It's just you, you need to be well put together. And then I guess it also depends on where I'm meeting you at. If I'm at the grocery store and you decide to approach me in the grocery store, which has happened before, like, I'm going to judge you different from if we're so, at... Oh, based on appearance. Yeah. I'm going to look at you different versus if I've run into you at a club. Like... So the guy at the concert we saw that had, like, the loafers and was, like, dressed. I was really confused. Right. Like, so, he didn't look comfortable. So in that scenario, if that guy approaches you in that environment, you think what? That he needs some new shoes or some different, like, okay, you know, like I said, it's just the, the environment and every, obviously all of that plays a factor into the yes or no about exchanging numbers because that's what you're really trying to get to anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so is it not what we aren't outside? Do people still ask for numbers or do we ask for social media? No, I still would want a guy to take my number. I don't want you stalking my social media before we have a conversation why is it stalking what that's a strong word i mean not stalking but like i don't want you combing through my instagram like trying to piece my life together before you have a conversation with me wouldn't that make more sense in this in the frame context of not wasting your time because if i go on and i see something that doesn't appeal to me i can say uh leave that alone and vice versa, I feel like most people, when they meet someone, they try to learn more about them before they have a first conversation. Now, I don't know I, how you present the information you learned is important, because you can come off as a creep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hey, I saw a couple weeks ago you was on vacation. Mm -hmm. I, I could see how that's problematic. Mm -hmm. But I would also, if I see you got kids, or I see you got pictures with your parents or family, like I think that I'm going to eventually see your social media if we become anything. Mm -hmm. I don't see why I so can't figure research. it out then. Like, so it's okay to waste a couple of minutes. I mean, yeah, every it's, I mean, you don't look at it as wasting time. Like, it's the process. Like, how are you meeting people and actively searching for the one if you're not out there meeting people and potentially going on bad dates, wasting time? But I like, see. I guess that's interesting. For me because i feel like i would want to have an idea because i i believe and social media is not everything let me be 100 percent clear people lie on social media all, all the day, time every day filters angles all that but i do feel like social media would give me a better view of who you are versus whoever i first start talking to the person you first start talking to is not the real person and i'm going to get more at like if Say I'm say me and you met, mm -hmm. and then we cool. I got your number, whatever, blah blah. And I go on your social media, and you got a bunch of pictures that are promiscuous or flamboyant, so to speak. <laughs> okay, I'm out. <laughs> like we don't need to have any more conversations. Now, if when I saw you out, you didn't look like that, and then I go on your social media, and it's your OnlyFans model and the Instagram model, like okay, we're good, but. I wouldn't know that until I talk to you, and then it could be weeks, and it's like, dang, this girl is a sex worker. <laughs> I don't want that. <laughs> like, 
<sighs> I don't know. Like social media obviously plays a huge role in people's interaction nowadays. And I wish it didn't. Because I think so obviously social media, I think, causes a lot more problems than it helps really? as far as relationships. Yeah. Especially people who have a lot of insecurities. Um, I was in one of my mom groups. Uh, maybe it was earlier this week or last week. There was a mom in one of my um, mom groups on Facebook. And she is dealing with postpartum. And she has has a lot of insecurities. Her boyfriend, significant other, whatever you want to call him, had to take a work trip. And he went out to eat and he te- and sh- they were texting and she was asking him where they were going to eat. And then I think they had, obviously they have like iPhones or something because she was able to ping his location and look it up mm-hmm. and they were at Hooters. And so she asked him, are you at Hooters? And he was like, yeah, I am. I got outvoted. The other guys wanted to come here. So we had, and they had to stay together. I think he was like military or something. They had to stay together. So he went to Hooters with his friends. Um, and she was pissed. Like she was really, really, really angry. Um, and she couldn't, she didn't know why she was angry. So, But then she was but- like, I, you know, I look at the people and things that he follows and likes on Instagram and none of those people look like me. And I feel this way about myself and I'm just really upset that he lied to me about going to where he was going. So he lied or he didn't tell her? He didn't tell her. And then when she asked him, he told her. So like he told he told her they were just going out to eat. Which they did. Which they did. But he didn't she didn't he didn't tell her where they were going. And when she looked up his location, like So did she ask and he not tell her? And so she had to look it up? Uh, Because you just glossed over. She stalked him. (laughs) I'm I'm like stuck there. Like they're married or together. They're together. They're together. Yeah. They just had a kid. Yes. And rather than just asking him where he was at. She stalked him. Well, she did. She asked him, where are you guys? And he said, we went out to eat. Um, and that's because there was like a delay in the messages. Mm. So she was trying to figure out, well, what's going on? And so she, you know, looked at his location and saw that he was at Hooters. And then when she asked him. And he was honest. And he was honest. We're at Hooters. And was like, I didn't tell you because I know how you feel right now. And so it sounded like, from the way that she framed it to me, it sounded like he was trying to avoid an argument. and Possibly, because she's insecure. Right. And to a bunch of the other women on the comments, they also felt the same. Um, I didn't think that he lied about it. But then when she went into the social media part, like I see it all the time, like women will go and they'll look at their partners, who they're... Who, what they're liking on social media, what they're looking at on social media. Like, you like this girl's pick, or in you know, there's so many different things about social media that get people hemmed up in relationships now. But I think this is this. I hope y'all understand where I'm going with this. This is to me almost a gun control argument. You're blaming social media when the real problem is insecurity. Social media, who your man likes on social media doesn't matter. He's not dating them. He ain't with them. Now, if you go on social media and he's commenting and messaging stuff that's inappropriate, that's still not a social media issue. No, that's a person issue. That's a person issue. And he's if he's hollering at them, he's probably hollering at other people and vice versa, man or woman. And so I've heard what you're talking about, and I just don't think that's a social media problem. I think think that's an insecurity problem that's Maybe he is, or the men, when they do that, I could see how that could make the insecurity worse. I agree. But I also don't think that's really that person's responsibility. You got to fix your own insecurity and whatever it is. That could be a man with money because men, if you don't make a lot of money and then your girls hang it, 
it does make a lot of money and she's around a lot of men with money that might be single and professional. And now they start to get insecure. They don't want, or they want to go to every company party because of whoever might be there. Like that's corny to me. I understand it, but it's corny. And the issue isn't her job. The issue isn't her. The issue is you as a man are insecure and our new phrase for the year, you need to work harder, <laughs> work harder. Like, if you're upset about other people making more money than you, figure it out. Go to night school. We just saw some graduate. It's graduation time. Like, you got to figure that out. So for her, I just, or I guess my stance has always been pretty similar on social media because I know a lot of people that, well, I'm just not going to be on it because it causes too much drama. I think it causes you to be whatever you are. It's like money. If you give some, if you spend a bunch of time on social media, you just like and become more of what you like and become when you get more money you buy stuff that you like and enjoy um so i get it but i hope she gets that figured out because whether social media exists or not she's still insecure mm -hmm. and she i believe social media can actually be very good and it allows for transparency um in a lot of ways and i think it has helped a lot of women catch a lot of men because of social media so I get it. And I think in everything has its good and it's bad. I just, when I hear that, and that example is common on both sides, men and women. Um, because as a man, and I don't think we go through, I don't go through your social media. I don't know what you like or anything like that. But if there was a bunch of six to white, strong men. White? Well, I'm black. So I don't know. And I'm dark skinned. So if it was a bunch of light skinned, <laughs> six, two, you know, buffed out dudes, and you followed 35 of them and you liked all their pictures, I don't. Would you feel away? I, I, I was trying to think if I would, and I just don't. Like, I got four kids. Oh, let me go find out. I can go follow Brad Pitt and them folks. I, I don't understand why you said them. white, though, because of my ex? No, because I'm black. So I was just trying to find something that's not that's me. That's not you. Okay. Right. I, it could be Hispanic for all I care. Light skin. I don't, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. If you followed a ton of them, I would probably say, hey, like, is this your thing? <laughs> um, and then if I looked at your past history and you had dated a bunch of those and I don't fit, then I would be like, well, no. But I also have told you, I don't think I was, you know, the ideal guy for what you want. Mm -hmm. Like, so... I guess maybe I'm confident and I know that I'm not, so I don't really care. You don't really care. Yeah. I mean, when I think of the people that I've dated, I don't think the biggest difference between you and I think almost everybody is just the height. You're probably the shortest guy I've been with. Makes sense. But I mean, I'm, I'm at short. the same time, you're still taller than me. Not by much, but you are still taller than me. Yeah. Um, but I've been with a white guy, Hispanic, darker than you, lighter than you. So you dated guys darker than me. Mm -hmm. Well, you dated a lot of people. I have. I have not. I know. And I had no interest. I think dating is a waste of time, for the most part. Um, but I don't know. I just don't get caught up in that. Like, I don't follow... Like, I used to get upset when my explore page would be a bunch of women. I know. It was really funny. It was a bunch of strippers and sex I don't know workers. if they were strippers. Or sex. I, I don't know. But, but it's it was a Instagram bunch of explore naked page. women. And, and that's not my They point. would always be on your explore page. And I, and I guess that's the thing. Like, there are definitely places and things that I'm insecure about. But social media has never been one of them. Like, so I if I liked a bunch of, like, uh, butt pics... Okay. 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 There's a, there's a difference to me between you liking something on social media versus you going out in public and doing something. Well, obviously. Yeah, like I don't care. You can like all the big booty models you want to. You used to have a oh, I don't know, you probably still do have a thing for Kyla Pratt, but I follow no, her too. She's whack now. I know, but I follow her too. So like I would you know, be scrolling, oh, so and I would know. always see that you had liked her stuff, and it's yeah. like, dang, he loved this little Kyla. I did. She's wholesome, and now she's just old. She's the same age as us. 
That's oh. what I said. Well, you're old. Okay. I mean, moving along. There's women 10 years younger. I don't know who the hot new woman is. Um, it's Lori Harvey. She's not it. She is it. I don't get it. Regardless of what you get or not, like she is it. Okay. I'll take your word for it. Um, so we just spent a bunch of the show talking about stuff that we had no idea <laughs> that was on the list. Um, so I will kind of stay in the same vein of, so we talked about relationships and how to meet somebody and all that, this, that, and other. Mm-hmm. There is, I won't say a groundswell, mm-hmm. but there's this idea that if you are a certain type of woman, a man should pay your bills. Not married, but should pay your bills. You can have your own, but if you want me, you got to take care of me. You got the Birkins, the Louis, the Chanel. Like, that's my standard. Do you feel, and there was a woman that actually, it was a soundbite, and I will try to find it maybe for the, I guess I could find it for both. Probably for our video, it's going to be easier. Um, And I may or may not find it. I don't want to get into copyright stuff or it get muted anyway, because YouTube. But, is that standard any different from sex work? If the man says, oh, if the standard, the understanding is, hey, you want to be with me, you want to fly me out, you want to have me on your arm. Get flowed out. Like, I need trips, I need jewelry, I need bags, I need my nails done, I need my hair done, I need to be fed. But if you do those things, you get me. Do you feel like that's a relationship? Or do you feel like that's more of a sexual arrangement? Um, I don't think I understand your question. So, but I'm gonna answer it to how I think I understand it. Mm-hmm. Um, one, if you can't do any of the things for yourself that you are requiring someone else to do for you, you're garbage. Like you're trash. Like, it's a big <laughs> It is. Because, like, how can you require for a man to purchase you a Birkin and you haven't bought one for yourself? How can you, how can your expectation be this when you're still down here? And I've seen that a lot from people, women, to be particular. And this isn't a pick me, choose me moment. Like, this is just honest. Like, the things that you require from someone to even be, to socialize with them. Like, I don't believe women should pay for dates. Like, that's a thing. I'm okay with that. But I also think that if you are pursuing a relationship with someone, you should reciprocate the behavior that you want the person to give to you. So if I'm really interested in you, I'll pay for a date. If I, you know, if our relationship or whatever it is we're doing is going in a good direction, I'll buy gifts too. It's not just gimme, 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 and oh, let me break you off a little piece because I really liked all the stuff that you bought for me. Now, I'm not going to go as far as to say it's prostitution, <laughs> um, but when you, if you break it down to the simplest forms, if you're accepting gifts and money and tokens of appreciation from someone, in exchange for sex or whatever the case may be, technically it is a form of prostitution. Um, Now, on the other hand, if you can get men to give you all that stuff and do all these things for you without having sex, that's a totally different story. Those guys are idiots. (laughs) But some men like to do this. Some men are fine with that. And get nothing in return? Some men are fine with it. Oh, Lord. Okay. Um, I don't look at it as prostitution, but I do think that it's way beyond time for women to stop having these expectations of men who aren't their husbands or not even their boyfriends. Like you want every dude that talks to you, every dude who wants, you know, the chance or opportunity to get to know you, you need to know their full background, you know, financial situation And all of that when you're not giving up really anything. Like, I think that's ridiculous. I've always thought that was ridiculous. 
and maybe because of the way I think the, some of the relationships that I was in turned out the way that they did. Um, but I've never been on board with the buy me this, take care of me that, and we're not even in a committed relationship. Now, if we're in a relationship and I say, hey, let me get some nail money, I don't think that should be an issue. But you're my man and it's your job. <laughs> what? It's not like you're, we're together, we're in a relationship or we are married. If I say, hey, let me get this so that I can do that or I ask you for a gift, like the expectation typically is that I'm going to receive. But I also think that that should be reciprocated. So if you ask me for money to, I don't know, that just what do is, men do? Go to the gun range. There you go. No, no, no. So let's, <laughs> no, we're not going to do that. So <clears throat> you, and I don't, I don't know if these were just random words you decided to throw out, <laughs> like job. Um, but so how does sex fit in? Is that not a woman's job? In a relationship? Yeah. I mean, sure, it is. So then how do y'all weaponize it? If it's your job, you can't take it away. That's your job. You didn't do what you were supposed to do to deserve me to do my job. Properly. I did. If my job is to pay for stuff, but you're just mad because I like someone's pick or I went to Hooters and didn't tell you, that's well, not change. That I did my job. Well, then you need to reevaluate the person that you're with because they are not holding up their end of the bargain. That just doesn't seem. It's the same. I mean, if how looking, can the woman that's not holding up her end get mad at the guy for not holding up his end? I'm not saying that she she should. I'm saying if everybody is doing what they're supposed to mm -hmm. do, and and this is we're we're specifically talking about within the confines of a relationship now. Yes. Dating, not marriage. No, yeah, we're together, mm -hmm. and there are certain expectations that you have of me, right? As your girlfriend. Right. And there are certain expectations that I have of you as my boyfriend. Right. It, essentially, we can look at it as a job. Okay. If you are not meeting the requirements, then obviously there are consequences for not meeting the requirements. If she okay. is tripping mm -hmm. about whatever she's tripping about and withholding something that is part of her job requirement then you are more than at liberty to fire her from her job and recruit somebody new. Or you keep her. <laughs> and, and you figure it talked, out. And because we, no, no, no. Because we've talked about how difficult it is for a man to find a new replacement. Mm -hmm. So I've already got one. <laughs> but she has a huge deficiency. A huge, but how, but so, we've also talked about on this podcast how... Uh, it, how willing people are to live with the deficiencies in their relationships and just solve it outside of the relationship. Right. So you suggest go and cheat. Right. So if she then finds out that you went and cheated, she didn't do her job. It she doesn't matter. Upset. You still cheated. You lied. You cheated. You violated trust. You have, she broke the, she started with her though. It didn't. I wouldn't have cheated if she would have helped did her job. Right, but instead of reprimanding her for not doing her job, you went out, you lied, you cheated, and then you're going to continue to lie until you get caught. Or she does a better job. No. That's, that's, what do you mean no? I'm not saying no, she doesn't do a better job, but once you cheat in a relationship, you can't just take it back. It has to be rectified. Like you have to- How do you fix, rectify that? I don't know. Like these are- this is not, that's not the part of the conversation right now. Part of the conversation that okay. we're having is the fact that apparently since she's not doing her job, instead of firing her from her job, you are choosing to recruit someone else on the side. You said women have the black book. This is the man's way of making the black book. I mean, men have little black books too. But no, in, men don't have little black books. <sighs> black men don't cheat. Boy, stop. Just stop. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. What I'm saying is 
there are always options outside of cheating. Agree. Now, if you don't want to partake in any of those options mm -hmm. and you decide to cheat, mm -hmm. you are signing up for whatever repercussions there are for you cheating. It doesn't matter what she did first. You How took does it that to, not matter? You took it to an extreme. And cheating of, isn't even that extreme. It anymore. isn't. It's not. You go ahead and go cheat on me and see how extreme we get. I just feel. I did that. Today. Go ahead. No, it's not. It's it depends. It depends on the people. People literally and cheat I'm every day. Not, what people do cheat every day. Like I said, you go ahead and go cheat on me and see what happens. So, but if, that's a lot of people. Like they say that it's acceptable. They say that we sing all these songs about cheating. Until you get cheated on, and then you're ready to burn somebody's house down. And I just don't understand. Yeah, I don't either. So don't cheat on me, so we don't got to figure it out. Do your job good, and I won't cheat. All right. All right, so we got an agreement. We got an agreement. All right. So just <laughs> everybody do their job, and everybody hopefully do their people job. would stop cheating. Yeah. I mean, if you cheat, and there's no reason, that's just really trash. But if you're, like, begging and pleading... Um, for you know an aspect of the relationship, and someone else can provide it. It it can be hard to start over. To we, young Miami talked about it. Her dude cheated. She packed up her house. She left, and then she came back, and then she realized I have nowhere to go. Like, so it's not as easy as just like quitting. I mean, that's her. Fault for a faulty plan, you should always have a backup plan in case things. Don't Why work should you out. be planning for your relationship? You don't plan for your relationship. So what, what is fail, a backup? Plan? But you should have some contingency in, in place. Why? In case something happens. So you're setting up a backup plan because it's your relationship. It's not setting up a backup plan. So it's just it? making sure that you'll be okay if things don't work out the way that you think. It's like life insurance, bro. Do people go and purchase life insurance to expecting? To drop dead within, you know, two days if after. If you get term life insurance, you probably expect to die in that term. Yes. That's the point. But nobody buys term life insurance. Well, a lot of people do because it's a lot cheaper. Well, people shouldn't buy term yeah, life insurance. That's fair. You and I don't get know get whole we're... life insurance and just bite the bullet and pay the cost. Yeah. And now th that sounds great if you can afford to pay the cost. Have you not looked around? Oh, I've looked because I have to get another policy for all. So the... if you think food, gas... Utilities, mortgages, rent, interest rates, everything's up. You don't think life insurance is also I gone know up? it's up, right? So that's all I'm saying. Jesus. I'm not saying what you're saying is wrong. I'm saying what you're saying isn't as easy as you're saying it to be. It's not. I know it's not as easy as you say it to be, but it's still something that you should have. You agree. Should have life insurance. We agree. We agree on that. Um, so this other situation came up recently, uh, and it's come up a lot of times. But specifically a situation uh, where, I guess we could say names. Joe made a criticize, didn't criticize. He had a like two-word two, line, two joke about Alicia Keys is on diary and saying that Tony, Tony, Tony cleaned her up. And Swiss Beast responded like, basically, Will Smith, keep my wife's name out your mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my question is, should spouses be off limits to criticism no no why because especially in in a broad general way that's like, very shocked that you say that but inter like we're we're entertainment's a little different but not we're really. personalities let's just go with that okay um people watch our podcast they listen to us argue like they've seen us have some pretty bad arguments, but I'm putting myself out there. We are putting ourselves out there open for criticism, you know, for criticism. Mm -hmm. I can't necessarily get mad at someone for having an opinion of me based on what I'm putting out there for people to, excuse me, for people to consume. Now, if you're like stalking me and I don't even know. I don't know. People have to be open to criticism, period, not just spouses. And it really depends on, I think, the situation and who it's coming from, how it can be perceived. Like, again, 
entertainers, actors. I mean, I don't really think there's any professional field where you don't have to be open to criticism or what you do isn't up for some form of critique. So yeah, you can feel a way about someone critiquing your spouse and their profession, but what can you really do about it? Now, it's a different scenario when you're critiquing someone's like person, like you're a bad parent or those sorts of things. That to me is out of line. Um, but when you're critiquing someone on their profession or what they do, you know, like it's all fair game. Now, I might not like it, but <laughs> are you confused by my answer? Like, that doesn't make any sense. How? The Will Smith situation is the epitome of you should be able to criticize someone's spouse. And everybody said he should have defended his spouse. So I don't understand. Like, if you do something wrong, if we're out and you do something wrong, mm -hmm. say you spill a drink on somebody or something mm -hmm. accidental on a guy. Yeah. That guy should come to you, not me. So, and if he came to you, I'm supposed to just stay out of it. So again, you are mixing up what I said. In a professional manner and, you know, the in certain dynamics, yeah, critique is going to happen. Criticism is going to happen. So if the guy criticized you based on the take on the podcast... It's cool. Yeah. But if you criticize your own public, it's not cool. It depends on what he's criticizing me for. Like, I just don't like you. Well, then you don't like me. And it sucks. And I'm not going to like that. But he should be able to say that to you. He shouldn't be like, you're right. Tell your girl I can't stand her. Or yeah. tell your girl she needs to quiet down because this environment isn't uh, conducive for the way she's acting. He should come to me or should go to you. I mean, Stuff like that he could totally keep to himself. But if he really did feel a way about me being loud or something, he would come to you because you don't want to come to me with something like that. And then you so deal then, with it from there. So as if your profession is a public one, yes. But if you're not a public figure, then you cannot speak to someone else's spouse. I think that there are certain dynamics where, yes, it's okay to critique someone's spouse. Uh -huh. Like, we go to a dinner party. Yeah. And the person, one wife cooks for everybody. And the food sucks. You should be able to tell the person who cooked not to do it again. Like, that you didn't like the food. There's a nice, what? There's a nice way to do that, but I'm you Are y'all hearing this? Jesus Christ. So you're supposed to go to someone else's house. And if the food sucks, as a, say, because I'm more picky, I'm a pickier eater than you. You sure is. And if it sucks, I should, if I'm so inclined, go to the chef, in this case, a, a friend or maybe even someone we don't know that well's spouse and be like, yo, you cook this? This is trash. Well, no, that's not how you do it. And no, <laughs> you shouldn't, but you can. Okay. And then there's a way to do it. There's a way to say it. And you yeah. don't have to say it to that person. You can say it to their spouse. Right, that's what I'm saying. So if I felt a way about the way something's cooked, I should go to him and be like, yo, all right, this wasn't it. Mm -hmm. I should not go to her and be like, Hey, you I appreciate cook. all the things you tried to do, but this is awful. And I'm not going to eat. I'm going to order something. Like, you shouldn't say that. Okay. All right. I think there's a line that you walk when you're critiquing and no, criticizing 100%, people. No, 100%. I just, I think that's interesting, um, to say the least. But, um, yeah, that's that's episode 64, ladies and gentlemen. Uh I was gonna say something. I was. Go ahead. I didn't know what you were going to say. I was gonna wrap it up, but go ahead. Like whatever that was, whatever you got. So everybody, 
This is what week is this? We're it doesn't Angel. matter. If you are in, if you're one of our subscribers, one of our followers, you love us on social media, whatever the case may be, this weekend is something in the water. Pharrell has bought his awesome festival back for the second time. It is located here in DC, and we're going. Um, there's no VIP option, so we'll be amongst all the regular people. Yeah, broke people. <laughs> Um, we're super excited. We're going to have tons and tons and tons of content um, for you guys this time around. We, As if we didn't last time? Well, Coachella, I feel like, well, I, I feel like I kind of dropped the ball at Coachella because my mind wasn't all there. Understand. Um, but this time, this time, people... You're going to get an awesome experience because we're going to have an awesome experience. Um, the lineup is pretty dope. Um, Justin Timberlake might make an appearance. Well, it's not my. He's that, really? We went to that? Of all the artists, that's the name you came up with? Yeah. Goodness gracious. <laughs> I mean, there's a bunch of people there. Black is there. Pusha T is there. There we go. I mean, Pharrell. Yeah. Like, there are so many people, and we are so excited. Cannot wait. So make sure that you are following us on all of our social media pages because there's going to be a ton of stuff. We'll probably go live. We might do a giveaway of some sort. Like, we've got some stuff to figure out. But it's going to be a super dope experience. And if you are also going to something in the water, hit us in the comments to let us know that you're going to be there. Maybe we can link up. Woo-woo. Woo-woo. Should be a blast. Are we going to tell them about any of the other shows we're going to this year? We've told them. Well, we just decided on one, so. Hmm? We just decided on another festival. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, you know, going to wait till that's closer? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Never mind. Um, but we are doing another festival towards the end of the year. We are. Can't um, wait to, you know, lay that one on you guys. Um, and so, in closing, uh, in life, things happen. And recently, I was supposed to go to a Justin Bieber concert, <laughs> and it got canceled. And obviously, you guys know. For the know, third time. Yes, for the third time. I've done everything that I can to try and see this gentleman. <laughs> and whether it be COVID or, and I don't remember the name of the uh, virus that he has, but um, I do want to you know, just kind of give shouts and prayers to him. Uh, I couldn't imagine the last update I saw. It was like he was having trouble eating, which mm -hmm. I can see how that could be problematic if you can't move half your face. <clears throat> um, and so just uh, you never know, you know, what, what people are dealing with, what people are going through. So shout out to him. Uh, been a fan, still a fan. Hope for the best. Hope for a speedy recovery. I am going to try and go should you reschedule one more time and then take a mask and I just give me my money back. Cause it was not meant to be, mm -hmm. um, but you know, you gotta, you gotta choose wisely in, in what you do. Uh, but in everything that you do choose, um, always bet on yourself. Like it's it, the world we live in today is just, it's crazy. Like there's a bunch of stuff we didn't get to here today that we, we could talk about. I feel like since Buffalo, there's been like a mass shooting every other day, it almost seems like. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they're getting a little loose with the mass shooting term, but multiple people are dying. And that's, that's not funny. And I, yes, people die everywhere, every day, but some of this stuff could be prevented. And so uh, my thoughts and prayers for all of the communities that have been recently impacted. I know there was a Pride event this weekend that they arrested like, 15 to 20 people that were going to counter protest or whatever, like the world just needs way more love, way more God. I think as we've gotten away from being a, a nation where God is first, God is love. And if you, you substitute him with money, power and other things, then it's just not going to be great. And I've talked about the foundation of this country, but it is getting wild. Um, so please be careful to all of our followers and subscribers and fans. Uh, we love shows and entertainment, but artists, uh, please protect yourself. Roddy Rich just caught some gun charges at Governor's Ball. Uh, so just, just protect yourself legally. 
understand where you are and where you're going, it, it ain't worth it. So please, please choose wisely and always bet on you. Uh, we've done it. We will continue to do it here. Uh, the things we say and do, we don't just say and do for entertainment. Some of it's for entertainment, but ultimately it is true to who we are. Um, so we appreciate y'all. We love y'all. We thank y'all. And we will be seeing y'all keep those notifications turned on because we got a lot coming this week. Have a great day.